I put this exit sign up here for egress costs and to remind me, you know, I think where we are right now is we've had people move to the cloud. We had a load of people suddenly rush to the cloud. Um, we've had people sort of, um, you know, move wholesale. But really what we're seeing now that there's been a few years of, of significant cloud working on its own, that people are starting to understand the true costs of it. So I think early on we had, you know, this, this, under, this misunderstanding perhaps that just throwing it in the cloud would be almost, you know, almost costless. You know, it's just in the cloud. But the cloud takes running. You know, we need somebody to, to operate it. You need trained and skilled people in-house to make that work. It's not zero engineer cost. You need to have, you know, accreditations for the cloud providers. And you also need to understand that cloud providers themselves aren't necessarily 100% uptime. You know, there have been outages in some, some areas. But it is definitely right for other things. And um, we also have seen, uh, I can think of a couple of great examples in our world that um, I've seen customers have realized that their cloud, their entire cloud storage is secured on one person's private credit card. They didn't find out till that credit card, you know, expired and suddenly they couldn't get access to their media. So, you know, I think we're, we're looking for a place where we understand um, how that works, how the cloud works, how our on-prem works, and, and are there hybrid options that will work? Um, you know, and we want to know where our costs are going to be. So an example recently, NASA had costed to put something like 240 petabytes of data in the cloud. They realized shortly after they hadn't costed for the egress costs of that data, getting it back from the cloud, which costs money. So there are hidden costs there if you're not careful, and it happens to the best of people.